Welcome to the course on materials characterization. Today we are going to learn if this subject on materials characterization and how this particular subject is so much important for the students who are studying metallurgical and materials engineer. Myself, Dr. Jayanto Das from Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. I am teaching this subject more than five years and my research topics are well linked with this particular subject. Let us begin the introduction. The topics that we are going to cover are optical microscopy, some of you may have already uh, studied optical microscopy, but in this particular uh, subject, we will go into more deeper of this. Not only the details of the optical microscope will be done, but how to analyze the image and what are the information that you can collect out of a optical microscope will be also discussed. The second topic is the scanning electron microscope. So there are many different scientific theories behind the development of electron microscopy and all the aspects will be covered on that. The third topic is the absorption spectroscopy different classification of absorption spectroscopy will be also discussed and one of the very important topic in the field of metallurgy is nano indentation how this nano indentation technique has evolved with time beginning from the macro micro indentation how this nano indentation topic particularly different compared to the other indentation technique will also be discussed. Now, the thermal analysis technique is also very important aspect of any material characterization because you may have given a sample material and those material you need to estimate the melting temperature or any phase transition that are going on inside your sample require estimation of a particular annealing time or temperature and therefore one has to perform this thermal analysis technique not only in terms of measurement of temperature or understanding some physical phenomena of solidification or melting but also some other phenomena or engineering properties linked with that. It could be also some phenomena involving the heat capacity measurement or maybe some thermomechanical analysis or TMA or DMA dynamic mechanical analysis or you want to perform a tension test at a given temperature you want to measure viscosity of a sample at a given temperature these all particular engineering properties fall under the scope of thermal analysis technique now the scanning probe microscopy, this is also another very important aspect. The scanning probe microscopy are classified into two different very important microscopy technique. One is atomic force microscopy and the scanning tunneling microscopy. From the name itself, you realize that this tunneling phenomena of electrons are important and based on those principle, the microscopy technique has evolved. Because in this case, you need a probe 
which come close to the sample. Using the same probe, we can measure the atomic level forces between your sample and also the probe. So, between the probe and the sample, the forces are measured and based on those principles, this atomic force microscopy technique has been developed. Now, if you have given a bulk sample and this bulk sample means I am talking about a industrial level bulk piece of a metal or alloy, like a billet. You may have seen the billet in a continuous casting in a steel industry that is very long. And if I want to measure some of the engineering properties of such steel billet, then you need to cut the sample from some given locations of your interest. Also, if you want to know the average properties, then you have to collect sample from many different locations of a big billet so that you can generate a better statistics of the engineering results. Now, when we talk about bulk, we are talking about such big billet. But when we talk about small sample, how small it can be? That's a good question. Now, I feel that if I have asked you to measure the chemistry of such a big bulk sample, you can simply take a small piece of a metal or alloy and dissolve it in a liquid medium and then you can measure or, or go for some chemical analysis. Okay. But if I ask you to know the chemistry of some surface layers, a surface layer means I am talking about 10 atomic layer. Only 10 atomic layers. If the distance between the two layers is 3 angstrom, then it is only 30 angstrom, means 3 nanometer only. Can we measure or can we get an estimate or can we get an idea of the chemistry of such layers? Yes, it is possible. And that is one of the very important aspect of this particular subject of material character. What are they? They are surface analysis technique. And this spectroscopic technique always says about chemistry of a sample. What I want to mean? It means that when we talk about microscopy, a microscopy technique always gives an idea about the microstructure of your sample. Whereas, if we talk about spectroscopy, a spectroscopy means it will give us an idea of the chemistry of the sample. Now, uh, these topics are very much important and using this X-ray photoelectron, the spectroscopy technique that is developed and we call it actually as a XPS. Now, uh, uh, the same uh, spectroscopy technique uh, for the surface analysis used by taking into consideration of the OJ electrons. You may have heard about OJ electrons, how it is generated, means when electrons are knocked out from the inner shell, we cause inner shell ionization of a sample. Because of that, electrons from higher cell jump into the lower shell and at that time, actually, what happens, the energy released. So once electron jump from the higher shell to lower shell, the release of the energy may emit X-rays or the same energy can knock out an electron from the outer shell. So that particular electron which is knocked out from the outer shell is called as OJ electron. So using those OJ electron that are emitted from your sample, we can collect information about the chemistry of your sample. How it is done, we will go into detail into those lectures. Now, uh, just in a brief of these first five topics that we will cover uh, within next one and a half months are the optical microscopy and I am just going through some of the important keywords of it. Like 
the contrast, the illumination system, the bright field, dark field imaging, the resolution, the uh, depth of field, depth of focus, lens defect and aberration, differential interference contrast microscopy that is in a short form called is DIC, different source using polarized beam, phase contrast microscopy, confocal microscopy, hot stage microscopy, cold stage microscopy. What are the need of it? As I said that we may need to investigate a sample that are undergoing some phase transition. What to do? So I am interested to know the change of the microstructure with temperature. And that time, usually we can place the sample on a hot stage. Means temperature will increase or at a given temperature, temperature is fixed, with time we are observing the change in the microstructure. Or maybe some phase transition occurred below sub-zero temperature. We call it as cold stage microscopy. Now, from a microstructure, we need to estimate how much volume fraction of a given phase alpha or a given phase beta is present. In that case, actually, we need to go for some quantitative metallography. Also, different image analysis technique. You may have learned about eutectic microstructure. In a eutectic microstructure, we have some colony-like microstructure, alternate lamella or rod of two different phases. In case of a binary eutectic, if it is a three-phase eutectic, there could be three phases. Now, the, how to measure the lamella thickness or interlamella spacing? These are also very important aspects of quantitative metallography. Now, uh, one can always ask how to understand which sample has a finer grain size which sample has a coarser grain size. This is also a very important part of this particular quantitative metallography technique. And we have a STM standard for it to know a microstructure and to compare such microstructure with other samples. In case of a scanning electron microscopy, we will cover different aspects of beam specimen interaction, working principles, image formation, secondary electron imaging, backscattered electron imaging, and there are many different factors that can affect on the emission of secondary electron or backscattered electron. In your school days, you may have heard about Rutherford backscattering, and these Backscattered imaging, backscattered electron imaging are very well linked with rather for backscattering phenomena. So you can see there is a lot of information that you have already learned during your school days. Now there are many different factors that affect that interaction volume. What we mean by interaction volume? When a electron beam fall on a sample, it interact with the sample. The region that is affected or the signals that are coming out of those region is named as interaction volume, where specimen electron interaction occurs. Now, there are also some instrumentation parts. Since we are all going to earn an engineering degree, it is very much important that we should learn the instrumentation part of each and every instrument that are going to be learned or taught in this particular subject. And therefore, the electron optics, gun, magnetic lens, spot size and detectors, these are very important aspects of learning the instrumentation. Now, uh, there could be uh, some spectroscopy technique which I already named like atomic spectroscopy, like atomic absorption spectroscopy, optical emission spectroscopy, 
okay and there are many different uh, spectroscopy techniques also there are x-ray microanalysis techniques so this x-ray microanalysis technique these detectors are attached to scanning electron microscope and here we will learn about energy dispersive spectroscopy wavelength dispersive spectroscopy means the x-rays that are generated from your sample are classified in terms of their energy or wavelength and from there how we can estimate the chemistry of it these are very important aspect of this course now there are also some important aspect to understand the roughness on your surface of a sample that can be done using 3d profiler or optical profiler for this nano indentation we will revisit the micro hardness we will try to learn these techniques like vicars and noob these are very old techniques but how they are important on today's context of material characterization the instrumented indentation that was developed much earlier than the nano indentation technique what are the differences between micro indentation and nano indentation these are very common questions that anybody can ask you in any of your job interview so these are very important the application the procedure of experimental setup different tips we use for nano indentation quasi static loading constant stiffness measurement application of it different material responses stiffness measurement corrected area versus the indentation depth correction how we do that reduce Young's modulus measurement all these aspects are very important there are many different factors that can generate artifact during such measurement so we need to learn many different errors that are generated in your data so that you can correct the data definitely as i said earlier the instrumentation part are also important so force actuation depth measurement these are very important aspect of this particular subject so so far we basically have looked into the most important aspect of this subject so this particular subject as i said materials characterization here we talk about materials right now from your first and second year classes you must have learned what are the different classification of materials the materials are classified into the metals alloys right these are known now there could be ceramic and there could be polymer and if you combine any of these two we can develop some composites right so composites are also important on today's context now there could be many different inorganic materials or there could be some gases so anything you characterize those materials falls under those category now what are the application of it right the application could be structural it could be electrical it could be electronic or it could be used for simple household purpose or some of these biomedical purpose and these are very important aspect 
and therefore not only these four but there are nine important engineering properties that are very much important thermal and and functional many different properties now in case of this particular characterization technique here the atomic or molecular level characterization can be possible or maybe we can uh, uh, think about some bulk characterization or elemental level we can characterize also we can study some bulk properties what are they like optical as i said earlier magnetic properties or maybe thermal or maybe electrical maybe mechanical so these are very important properties now we may need to look into some of the microstructure we may need to look into the crystal structure a crystal structure means i am talking about crystallography x ray diffraction those are involved with this particular structural investigation when a metallurgist talk about structure we always talk about basically crystal structure okay or maybe we need to study a little bit about the defects okay defect means dislocation stacking fault and all these and those can be done using transmission electron microscopy and therefore you will see that x ray diffraction and transmission electron microscopy is also another subject for you now there are also important aspect on the surface analysis so these are some of the very very important aspect of you now as i said that bulk characterization can be quantitative or qualitative means we can compare the data of those characterization or we can quantitatively estimate that okay and there are so many different techniques on that like atomic absorption spectroscopy ion chromatography x ray spectrometry i have already mentioned many of them actually on the other hand for surface examination or analysis we can always go for different different depth level or we can sputter away some material from the top of a surface and we can go deeper of this and we can analyze it and those are very important aspect of it so like eds wds and so on and uh, we will go into detail of uh, when we will begin those particular uh, uh, particular uh, subject uh, detail lectures uh, now there are many different scientific principles like diffraction okay there are uh, electron optical method there could be some scattering phenomena there could be some uh, chromatography so based on all these scientific principles there are many different material characterization techniques have been evolved or developed like x ray diffraction i am giving you a name of it example it is purely based on diffraction phenomena okay now uh, in that particular subject you will learn about it now if it is based on absorption principle then there are x ray tomography and so on you may have heard about x ray tomography if somebody uh, somebody's bone is fractured then we have to go for some x ray uh, um, imaging or let's say x ray tomography and so on right now uh, there could be some oj electron spectroscopy and there could be some field and microscopy these are based on many different scientific principles and we will try to go into detail of each and every one and therefore today uh, we have discussed a very general introductory overview of this particular subject 
and we will continue our discussion in the next subsequent classes in detail on each and every topic. With this, we complete the class today and thank you.